The following landmarks are used to determine the location of the skin incision, the sternal notch, and the chin. The sternocleidomastoid muscle marks the lateral border. The incision is placed two finger breadths above the sternal notch in a skin fold. To create a symmetrical incision, the skin can be marked by pressing a thread onto the skin. The incision is bordered by the medial margins of the sternocleidomastoid muscle. Subcutis, platysma. The platysma is. Then the skin flaps are created. The upper flap is dissected until the hyoid bone is reached, which is pointed out here. Sutures can be used to fix the skin flaps to the surgical drapes. The medial margins of the sternocleidomastoid muscles from the lateral borders of the surgical field. Distal dissection is continued until the clavicle and sternum are reached. This is the anterior jugular vein. The sternohyoid is split in the midline. And on the left caudal side, a second anterior jugular vein appears. The left and right anterior jugular veins communicate by this jugular arch, which is ligated to prevent bleeding. The edges of the sternohyoid are lifted together with the sternothyroid muscle, and both muscles are dissected off the thyroid gland. Here the carotid artery is reached. Dissection is continued on the capsula of the thyroid gland until the middle thyroid vein is identified. This is the middle thyroid vein, which is ligated. The dissection is continued until the carotid artery, which is pointed out here. The thyroid gland is grasped with Ellis clamps. The superior thyroid artery is identified. The superior laryngeal nerve is expected to run deep to the artery and will be shown in the overview of the anatomy at the end of this film. The upper pole vessels are ligated close to the thyroid capsule. This is the sternocleidomastoid muscle the right thyroid lobe, the stump of the superior thyroid artery, and the carotid artery. The right superior parathyroid gland is identified and freed from the thyroid gland, preserving its branch from the superior thyroid artery.
the laryngeal skeleton is reached. In this area, the inferior thyroid artery is expected. But before ligation, the recurrent laryngeal nerve has to be identified. This is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The inferior thyroid artery is identified and its relation to the recurrent laryngeal nerve is pointed out. The inferior thyroid artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve. To mobilize the lower pole, the thyroid ima is ligated. Followed by the ligation of the inferior thyroid artery. Again the inferior thyroid artery and the recurrent laryngeal nerve. The first step in detaching the thyroid gland from the trachea is the transaction of the suspensory ligament of the thyroid gland. The dissection is continued right above the level of the tracheal cartilage. This little vessel often causes bleeding during the detachment of the thyroid. The right thyroid lobe is completely mobilized, including the pyramidal lobe if present. Now its only attachment is the isthmus. If a hemithyroidectomy is performed, the isthmus is clamped and ligated, followed by the closure of the wound. In a total thyroidectomy, the isthmus is not divided, but the previous steps are repeated on the contralateral side, starting with creating exposure until the carotid artery. To identify the recurrent laryngeal nerve, first the inferior thyroid artery is located. Then the recurrent laryngeal nerve is found. The inferior parathyroid gland is identified and dissected on its medial side as to preserve it. Then the upper pole is mobilized. Here the superior thyroid artery is ligated. The superior parathyroid gland is identified as this moving structure. This is the dissection plane that should be followed to preserve the arterial supply of the parathyroid gland. Now this parathyroid gland is even more visible. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is localized again when starting the lower pole mobilization. The inferior thyroid artery is ligated. This is the tubercle of Zucker candle, which is resected with the thyroid gland. Now the entry point of the recurrent laryngeal nerve into the thyroid cartilage is visible. 
The trachea is visualized and this is the direction of, and this is the direction of the dissection that can be performed with scissors or with a knife. The imer vein is ligated, after which the thyroid gland is completely freed. In this overview after thyroid resection, this is the trachea, the recurrent laryngeal nerve, and its entry point into the thyroid cartilage. The superior and the inferior parathyroid gland. The strap muscles are approximated with a running suture. Then the platysma is closed. The subcutis and platysma. The final layer is the skin. This is the tubercle of Zucker Candle. The isthmus, the upper poles, the lower poles, and on the right lower pole a resected parathyroid gland which will be reimplanted. The parathyroid gland is minced into small pieces. A pocket is created in the sternocleidomastoid muscle. And the fragments of the parathyroid gland are inserted into the pocket. Then the pocket is closed with a few sutures. The lymph node dissection starts along the right carotid artery, which forms the border of the dissection field. The recurrent laryngeal nerve is visualized up to the point where it crosses the carotid artery on its posterior side. The carotid artery and recurrent laryngeal nerve. Then the recurrent laryngeal nerve is dissected. These lymph nodes are included in the dissected specimen. This is the trachea. The lymphatic tissue is dissected off the trachea until the carotid artery, which is the inferior border. Then the pretracheal fat is dissected. Dissection should not be carried out far beyond the midline to prevent damage to the contralateral recurrent laryngeal nerve. That is now identified on the left side. Again, the lymphatic tissue is dissected off the carotid artery. The inferior thyroid artery runs deep to the carotid artery. The pretracheal dissection is completed on the left side. Then the dissection is continued along the carotid artery.
The recurrent laryngeal nerve is continually visualized as it runs along the trachea and crosses the posterior side of the carotid artery. In this overview, after central neck dissection, the strap muscles are resected to improve exposure for teaching purposes. Behind the trachea lies the esophagus. And this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the right and left carotid artery, and the right recurrent laryngeal nerve that crosses under the carotid artery. On the left cranial side, the superior laryngeal nerve, and the stump of the superior thyroid artery. إذا نال الفيديو إعجابك لا تنسى الاشتراك والضغط على زر لايك ومشاهدة الفيديوهات السابقة في القناة